Bill Cosby, part two. So, yeah, as I was saying, I'm not body shaming anybody, because like I said, she had a nice rack. But honestly, as a man, is again, she could have wrote all their names on clothing and like shot them in the air and let them explode over top of Bill Cosby's head or something. She could have done something more, less sexually acted, you know what I mean? Because like I said, she had a nice rack. I probably should stop pointing that out before the Me Too movement comes after my ass. But, you know, in all fairness, she's topless. I'm a straight man who loves boobs. So, yeah, I'm going to fucking look at them. I'm going to rewind the news tape plenty of times, even with the pixelation there. Okay, that was over the top. But same concept, you know. That's like me being a naked man heading to the court with a woman who has slept with children. So I'm going to walk around with an erection with uh, the coach that slept with a thousand young girls or the doctor that slept with all the gymnasts and I'm thinking that he's getting a raw deal. No, I'm not going to show up naked to support that asshole even though he did things to little girls and shit and he's going to jail for life. At the same time, with, with her and Bill Cosby, I wouldn't run around naked. I mean, she could tattoo their, their, their paint, their names and stuff all up and down her arms and that's cool. And, and, and just come in a swimsuit. You know, at least come in a swimsuit. Because that way, you're appropriate and they can't really arrest you for indecent exposure. But, you know, you got all their names taped on, painted on, and whatever the hell it is, and you're wearing as less clothes as possible, that's fine. As long as you're covered up in your special spots. Like your boobs and your vagina. You can wear a thong. That's cool. But, you know, there's, there's a limit to the things you can do because that there, in itself, could cause more of a backlash on her than anyone else. That's what I was getting at. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause her more of a backlash in the long run because everybody's going to be like, well, you're not helping us if you're running around topless for a man accused of rape. And if anything, you're giving incentive for more people to attack women who want to walk around topless because you're topless. Now, now again, I'm not body shaming or gender shaming or any of that thing, but there's an appropriate line of conduct that we must all respect. And that line of conduct is right and wrong. That little shade of gray only works for certain things, but not for more serious things. Never, ever, ever is there a time that rape is right. Okay. Penuating circumstances. In my graphic novel, I touch on the penuating circumstance of rape. Because right? in my graphic novel of Love 13, all of the female characters that form the group have been sexually assaulted or child raped. I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with Bill Cosby? I'm getting there. Because of what I just said, and that would make me a hypocrite if I don't explain it when you read the graphic novel about how the adoptive father and brother had to have sex with the adopted children so that his brother would not kill them. It's something about virgins always being more like the most powerful things on the planet because they're like, in essence, untouched. All right, moving back on to Bill Cosby. I brought this up because the topless lady, Nicole, Rochelle, whatever, the whole thing is that um, we have triple standards. Double standards would not really cover it, you know, because now they're getting to the point where women can be charged with rape. So there's is a thin, thin line of I don't know the exact way to explain it, but there's a there's a really this is really a triple standard because, you know, in the form of rape, rape is forceful sex, unconsensual. And now with um, statutory, the, the statute is that if a man has sex with a young lady who's not of consensual age, which means that she's not 18, depending on your state, because in some states it's 16. In Virginia, 16 is the consensual Age of age of consent or whatever the fuck I'm trying to say, and in some states it's even younger if you can believe that. 
I don't know those states, but I've been told in some states it's even younger. But for Virginia, because I live here, the age of consent is 16. However, legally, even though she can't consent to sex, she should not be allowed to consent to someone over the age of 18. That is what makes it statutory rape. Even though legally, she is the age of consent, because by the time you're 16, if you're not a genius, you're probably fucking. All right, so we're just going to put that as simple as I could. I couldn't simplify that any way than what I just said. If you're not a genius, then you're probably fucking. Or if you are a genius, then you're probably fucking. But anyway, you know, um, I brought that up because uh, the the triple standard is, is that if a man commits statutory rape, he's a sex offender for life. Yet some of these teachers commit statutory rape there are only sex offenders, like the, the, the female on male teachers. They're only, um, they're only a sex offender for like maybe two to three years. They can never get another job involving children, but they're only sex offenders for two to three years where men's sex offenders were, were not just a rapist, but the statutory rape or the coaches sleeping with the female cheerleaders or whatever, the dichotomy is where it's still a grown-ass teacher sleeping with a young-ass child. The men are sexual offenders for life. Right? Where the women, they kind of get a slap on the wrist. They're like, oh, you're a sexual offender. You're a statutory rapist. So you're a sexual offender for like the next three to five years of your life. And after five years, you still can never work with children again, but you can still get your life back together. So if a 25-year-old woman sleeps with a 15-year-old kid, when she's 30... It's like, bam, she's a new person. She can start all over again. We have a 23-year-old gym teacher who sleeps with an 18-year-old or 16-year-old participant in his um, course. He's a sex offender for life. You, you see where I'm going with that? Which swings us right back around to Bill Cosby because now that the young lady has run off topless, it gives more fuel to the possibility of him facing more like he's on the innocent street than the guilty streak since he's saying that he admitted to having a relationship with the curly-haired woman, but it was consensual. Now, here's where that third standard comes in, because technically, if you slip somebody a drug and they consent, it's an illegal consent. All right, let me explain that. For those who don't know, yes, there is a such thing as an illegal consent, all right? I have been looking to find it, but I know that it does exist in one of the Virginia loony laws because it, when it comes to like the loony laws, the ones they can't really enforce uh, in Virginia, any sexual position that is not woman on her back, man on top of her as he inserts himself is against the law. And they can't really enforce that because the act of privacy laws protect you from that. So if you're a sexual deviant and you just love the Kama Sutra, in Virginia, as long as you're not caught doing it doggy style, then you're good to go. But if you're caught doing it doggy style, you can hang that shit up. Unless if they broke in the house for something like drugs, like if they barricade the door for something like drugs and you're suspected for drugs and they don't find drugs on you, but they catch you in the middle of a third stroke and y'all in the doggy position, they can arrest you for that. So that they can still have something to hold on you while they continue to search your house. Now, I'm pretty sure most judges will probably throw that out, especially if they don't find drugs in your house or on your person, which they won't find on your person because if you're busy inserting yourself inside your female counterpart, it's going to be kind of hard to find drugs on your person unless you have shit keistered up your ass. Good luck with that. It's most of the time when dudes are doing the nasty, the last thing they want to do is keister some crack rock up your butt. Anyway, so... That being said, the young topless woman, it's hard to say if she's done more good or more bad for Bill or for the other lady. And, and, and the thing is that, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, it's, it's a touch and go situation with to do it or not to do it. But to come out topless is probably the thing that's going to really fuck shit up. 
and I'm not trying to insult the Me Too movement or the Black Lives Matter or the Women's Lives Matter or whatever fucking current movement is in whatever community that it is in. But we need to learn how to think before we do crazy, chromatic, insane, casidious stuff. Because if we don't, we don't know the consequences. She got arrested. She got released. All right? That's pretty much it. I think they only charged with indecent exposure. I'm not really sure because she got out of jail the same day because she was on Inside Edition. Like, the very next minute she was on TV, she was on Inside Edition. So, And um, she explained why she did it, which is like, I guess, a slight admission of guilt. I guess it depends on how you look at it. But um, outside of that, you know, I can only tell you that if we want to resolve these problems with, like, rape, and things like that, we need to start with where it begins, by being aware of everything. I'm going to make another video about that. Nothing to do with Bill Cosby. I'm James Wilson. You just come by number two. Be seeing you.